Right friends, good morning and welcome to the 6th week lecture. We are into 6th week of the year that is from February 2nd to February 8th. We are going to discuss important events of the week. What are the important events? Let us see. The first governing council meeting of Niti Aayog was held under the chairmanship of the Prime Minister. First governing council meeting of Niti Aayog. Then RIC meeting, RIC means Russia, India, China meeting held in Beijing where the external affairs minister attended that meeting. Then air crash in Taiwan, monetary policy, reduction in SLR. So these are important events of the week and let us discuss one by one. First look at the national issues. The most important issue is the first governing council of the Niti Aayog was held on 8th February. Governing council constitutes not only the chairperson that is the prime minister but also chief ministers of 29 states and lieutenant governors of 7 union territories. So, 29 states and 7 union territories, heads of these states and union territories represent the governing council of Niti Aayog. Please remember we have already discussed Niti Aayog replaced the planning commission and Niti Aayog came into existence on 1st January 2015. This is the brainchild of our Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi and during the first governing council meeting, Prime Minister stressed upon Two things, one is India should work as a Team India. Previously this name was given to cricket team but now this Team India concept is given to the entire governing body of the Niti Aayog. Team India means we have to work as a team to push India through. That is the first thing. Second thing what I would like to tell you is cooperative federalism. What is the meaning of cooperative federalism? Federal means there will be states. And in the federal concept, states will be independent entities under the central government and cooperative federalism signifies there should be cooperation not only between the states and the center but also among the states also to inch forward. So that is the meaning of cooperative federalism. In the first meeting of Niti Aayog, two words were coined by the Prime Minister. One is cooperative federalism and second one is Team India concept to go ahead, right? And three committees were formed to look into important aspects. First and the foremost is there are almost 66 centrally sponsored schemes. 66 centrally sponsored schemes. And government feels that 66 may not be necessary. And to review the relevance of these 66 centrally sponsored schemes, a committee will be formed. And the second important thing is India is lagging in skills. To improve skill development, the second committee is also formed. And the third one is with regard to Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. India wants to ensure Swachh Bharat by 2019. So, three committees were formed in the first Niti Aayog meeting. So, first committee is basically to look into the relevance of 66 centrally sponsored schemes. Second is with regard to how to improve the skills and the third one is with regard to Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, how to make clean India by the year 2019. So these three committees were formed and at the same time I have already told you one aspect is with regard to cooperative federalism and second aspect is with regard to Team India. Please work as a team. So this is basically the idea of central government and as far as the states are concerned, states raised two, three issues. One important issue is for, for important centrally sponsored schemes, states want 90% as grant. Some of the centrally sponsored schemes are 50-50 basis, some are on 75-25 basis, some are on 90-10 basis. 
but states want all the central government schemes should be with 90% grant by the central government right that is the uh, first important thing they looked into and the second one is flow of funds to the state should be increased that means state should get more funds from center so these two things are expressed by the states so this is all about the first governing council meeting of niti aayog held in new delhi on 8th february let us look into the next issue details of the nuclear deal we have already discussed in the previous lectures nuclear deal was signed when mr obama visited india and at that time we discussed about two aspects one is with regard to the civil liability for nuclear damages act 2010 where india came down by one step and second aspect is with regard to the inspection of the sites by the usa their usa came down by one step but the details were not clear at that juncture and now government came up with detailed clarification as per the government's clarification whenever any nuclear accident occurs in the country the liability lies with the operator not with the supplier who is operator operator is nuclear power corporation of india limited supplier is whoever supplies from other countries so the primary responsibility lies with the so operator not with the supplier and for this purpose a fund was constituted up to 2610 crore rupees 2610 crore rupees out of which the npcil will contribute around 1500 crore rupees and central government will contribute remaining 1110 crore rupees right so this is the clarification given by the central government that means in a nutshell i would like to explain you whenever any nuclear accident occurs the responsibility for liabilities rests with the nuclear operator that is nuclear power corporation of india limited and not with the nuclear supplier previously us government expressed their apprehensions that if some nuclear accident takes place they may be required to pay damages up to crores of rupees but now because of the clarification given by the government the apprehensions of the nuclear suppliers from western countries is no more in the horizon that means there will not be any apprehensions of the nuclear suppliers now i hope that the in future the nuclear supplies to india may resume shortly not only the equipment but also the fuel may flow to india because of the clarification given by the government right look into the next issue this is rsc meet last week we discussed our external affairs minister sushma swaraj went to russia and visit india year was also started there in russia visit india year was started when sushma swaraj visited russia so in continuation of that visit we are going to discuss two three points now in continuation of that visit rsc meeting was held in beijing rsc meeting means it is nothing but russia india china rsc meet is nothing but russia india china meeting these three countries foreign ministers met in beijing and two three issues came out of that meeting one is the rsc committee will recommend for membership of india into apec what is apec asia pacific economic cooperation what exactly is that asia pacific economic cooperation Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation is nothing but basically trade related economic cooperation that means to remove the trade barriers this is an agreement between 21 countries it is the block of 21 countries why it is called Asia Pacific because these countries are adjacent to the Pacific Ocean if you look at South America and North America the countries are Mexico United States of America, Canada, Peru, Chile and if you look at Asia these countries are Japan, China, Singapore, Thailand these countries are all members of 
this 21 member apec asia pacific economic cooperation remember the headquarters of asia pacific economic cooperation is in singapore and this organization was started in the year 1989 1989 apec was started and now during the rsc meet it was decided that they will press for the membership to india this is first thing second thing is asia pacific safety or security in the asia pacific region or you can say security in the pacific region should be monitored by united nations that is the second resolution and the third important resolution is shanghai cooperation organization is there that is scco there are six member countries in the shanghai cooperation organization and they will recommend for the membership of india into shanghai cooperation organization so these three important decisions were taken in the ric meet so remember in the ric meet it was decided that membership for india will be processed in apec and shanghai cooperation organization membership also will be processed these two three important decisions were taken in the ric meet which was participated by the external affairs minister of india sushma swaraj right let us move on to the next one Home Secretary Anil Goswami sacked. Anil Goswami. He was interfering into the affairs of CBI in connection with the Sharda scam. Sharda chit fund scam took place in Kolkata, and their operations spread to adjoining Orissa and Assam. In the Sharda group scam. Mr Mathang Singh was the former union minister and Mr Anil Goswami home secretary was interfering to the affairs of CBI in connection with the arrest of former union minister Mr Mathang Singh his phone calls were trapped and finally he was sacked from the post of home secretary he is due to retire on 30th June and he was sacked by the government and in his place mr lc goyal who was the secretary rural development is appointed as the new home secretary for a period of 2 years please remember mr lc goyal is appointed for the post of home secretary for a period of 2 years so mr goswami was sacked because of his interference into cbi affairs giving a strong message whoever interferes in the working of cbi it will not be tolerated right look into the next aspect comments by barack obama on religious tolerance mr barack obama and the first lady visited india recently and during the visit itself on the last day barack obama cautioned india india will progress as long as it is not splintered on religious lines and recently during the meeting held in washington it is annual national prayer breakfast along with dalai lama mr obama commented that in recent times religious disturbances are taking place in india which would have shocked gandhi ji that means in india disturbances are taking place on religious lines because of these disturbances india cannot progress that is the idea of mr barack obama otherwise you can say barack obama expressed concern about the religious disturbances that are being taking place in our country a case in point is five churches were vandalized within a short span of two months in delhi so this is the strong comment made by mr barack obama and the government put up its defense and the union finance minister stated that aberrations don't alter india's history of tolerance right look into the next is
look into the issues across the states what is happening there is a seepage of water from koteshwar dam koteshwar dam where is it koteshwar dam is situated in the state of uttarakhand on bhagirathi river on bhagirathi river and it is part of the entire tehri hydroelectric project entire tehri hydroelectric project and it is almost 22 kilometers downstream of tehri and this koteshwar dam is part of tehri hydroelectric project and recently there was a seepage observed from this koteshwar dam and government of uttarakhand clarified that there is no danger from this and they will take all the steps required to ensure no seepage occurs in future but the case in point i would like to explain here is the koteshwar dam is on river bhagirathi in uttarakhand and it is a part of the tehri hydroelectric project right let us move on to the next issue a reading news mandatory in rajasthan schools recently rajasthan schools made it mandatory to read the news in two languages english and hindi daily before starting the classes during the 20 minute assembly 5 minutes will be for national anthem and national song 10 minutes will be for yoga surya namaskar and meditation and 5 minutes will be for reading news in english and hindi so this is made mandatory by rajasthan government right so another important thing is recently haryana government also stated that they are going to introduce bhagavad gita in schools right so let us move on to the next issue this is unfortunate events taking place across the world one unfortunate event is execution of hostages by isis execution of hostages by isis isis islamic state of iraq and syria which is a ruling substantial portion of not only iraq but also syria they established their islamic caliphate there and they are taking hostage the citizens whoever are helping iraq and syria governments whatever the nations helping iraq and syria governments in fighting isis those nationals only they are taking as hostage recently two nationals from japan were taken hostage why they took japanese nationals as hostage because recently japan government announced an aid of 200 million dollars to the countries whoever are fighting the isis recently japan government announced an aid of 200 million dollars to the countries whoever are fighting isis in this connection they took hostage two japanese citizens out of which mr kenji koto is the freelance journalist and they remanded 200 million dollars as the ransom japan government refused and they executed both the japanese nationals look at the other issue jordanian pilot he was running f16 fighter jet that means jordan is fighting against isis but unfortunately his f16 crashed in syria isis took him as hostage subsequently he was burnt alive so these unfortunate incidents are taking place isis activities and several governments are fighting against isis and these activities are escalating from one place to the other these are the worrisome terrorist activities going on across the world let us hope for the peace to prevail in the world right look into the next issue air crash in taiwan in taiwan one aircraft was crashed just after take off in taiwan 
what is the other name for taiwan the other name for taiwan is republic of china don't confuse with china china is different taiwan is different chinese actual name is people's republic of china china's actual name is people's republic of china taiwan's name is republic of china people's republic of china is china republic of china is taiwan taiwan is independent country but several countries are not recognizing that fact i do not want to go into those details but look at this issue trans asia aircraft which took off from songshan airport on its way to kinmen immediately after take off it crashed because of the failure of the engine immediately it crashed into kilung river almost 43 people killed this is the second such incident of trans asia aircraft now 43 people killed and in the accident that occurred in the month of july 2014 around 48 people were killed so unfortunate air crash remember this crashed into kilung river right and this is trans asia aircraft this is the second accident during the past 7 months and this occurred in taiwan the other name for taiwan is republic of china right look into the next issue right important issue is monetary policy what is monetary policy monetary policy is basically announced by reserve bank of india once in two months that means every year every financial year remember financial year starts from april 1 and ends on march 31st every financial year this monetary policy is announced six times last monetary policy of february first week was the 6th of the financial year that means this is the last monetary policy of this financial year what exactly they do in monetary policy in the monetary policy what rpi does is they regulate the money flow into the market why what is the need for regulating money flow there is a need for regulating money flow because when easy money is available in the market it will lead to spending because of that growth will be there at the same time there is a very possibility of inflation so when lot of money is in circulation there is possibility of inflation when the money circulation in the market is reduced then inflation will come down but the basic problem is the gdp or growth when money is taken out from the market what will happen growth will reduce and unemployment will increase so rbi has to strike a balance rbi has to strike a balance between inflation and growth that's why in its monetary policy what rbi does is to reduce or increase various ratios and policy rates here there are two things first one is reserve ratios what are these reserve ratios first one is cash reserve ratio the second one is statutory liquidity ratio cash reserve ratio and say statutory liquidity ratio these two ratios are basically to ensure liquidity and solvency bank should not fail bank should have sufficient money if you go to sbi to withdraw 5 lakh rupees bank should not say that please come tomorrow they have to pay immediately that is liquidity bank should never fail sbi or any other bank as a matter of fact should not go into bankruptcy that means common man will be affected so as not to allow banks to go into bankruptcy and to ensure liquidity all the times what the rbi does is crr and slr is to be maintained crr is at present 4% so that means whatever money we deposit into the banking system they have to keep 4% as cash in separate account with rbi the salary is at present reduced from 22% to 21.5% so 21.5% is to be kept separately that means to ensure solvency and liquidity of banks 
this SLR and CRR is to be ensured. This is known as reserve ratios. Second one is policy rates. Policy rates signals interest rates to the market. Policy rates signal interest rates to the market. Basically, this is repo rate. Repo rate is the important policy rate. Repo rate was not touched. It was kept as it is at 7.75%. During the recent monetary policy, I would like to tell you only SLR was reduced. Only SLR was reduced from 22% to 21.5%. Remaining rates not touched. And these policy rates in detail we will discuss in some banking classes. But for the time being, policy rates are the rates which gives a signal to the market about the general interest rates in the system. And policy rates were not touched. And second thing is inflation target for January 2016 retained at 6% and one more important thing is about liberalized remittance scheme. Liberalized remittance scheme. What is LRS? Under LRS scheme, anyone can invest in a foreign country, anyone can spend on education, anyone can spend on health, anyone can spend on any other issue of purchasing shares and all. The maximum limit now is increased from $1,25,000 to $2,50,000. So now the limit for liberalized remittance scheme stays at $2,50,000. Right? So other important issues I have noted down. One more important issue is export credit refinance facility was withdrawn. Previously, they used it to finance for exports. Now that facility was withdrawn by RBI. So these are the important issues of monetary policy. Let us summarize these important issues. First one is this statutory liquidity ratio was reduced from 22% to 21.5%. Second important point is export credit refinance facility was withdrawn. Third important point is under liberalized remittance scheme that a citizen can send money to other countries, can invest in other countries that is increased from $125,000 to $2,50,000. $125,000 to $2,50,000. So these three are important changes in the monetary policy announced by the RBA Governor Mr. Raghuram Rajan. Right? More about finance and banking we will discuss in separate classes under banking which we are going to release shortly. Look at next. Small banks and payment banks. Recently RBA gave guidelines and almost 72 firms applied for small finance banks and 41 applications were received for payment banks. Small finance banks for what purpose? They have to lend maximum amount of money to small businesses. Around 50% of the loans should be 25 lakhs and below. That means to lend for small businesses, small finance banks are contemplated. And payment banks, payment banks main purpose is Transferring money, money remittances, they cannot lend. They cannot give any credit to any customer and they cannot lend. And which is the basic purpose of payment bank is only to transfer money, only to remit money from one place to other place, only to transfer money. So, 72 applications were received for small finance banks, 41 applications were received for payment banks. Remember, an external committee was formulated. For small finance banks, it is Usha Torat. She was the former deputy governor of RPI. So Usha Torat was the external chairman for shortlisting the applications for small finance banks. And Mr. Nachiket Moore is the external committee chairperson for payment banks. Nachiket Moore is the classmate of Mr. Raghuram Rajan from IIM Ahmedabad. Right? So, this is about payment banks and small banks. Please remember Usha Torat, external committee chairperson for small finance banks and Nachiket Moore for payment banks. Look at the next issue. Look at the next issue, Hurun Rich List. Previously, Everyone knows about Forbes list. Forbes list is for richest persons who are the richest persons on the earth. Similarly, Hurun Institute. Hurun Institute is in China. 
Hurun Institute is recently giving their statistics about the richest persons in the world and how many billionaires are there in the world. What is a billionaire? A billionaire is the person who holds properties worth at least one billion dollars. Remember, what is the value of one billion dollars? One billion dollars is roughly equal to rupees six thousand two hundred crores as per the present value of currency. One billion dollars is equal to six thousand two hundred crore rupees. Now look at the number of billionaires in the world. United States of America has got almost five thirty seven billionaires. That means. Maximum number of billionaires are there in United States of America. China has got 430 billionaires, and India is now in third position with 97 billionaires. India is in third position with 97 billionaires, and look at the list. Who are the world's top three? It is Bill Gates, number one. Carlos Slim of Mexico is number two. Warren Buffett is number three. In India, Mr. Mukesh Ambani is. With the twenty billion dollars wealth, is the richest Indian, and his position in the world is forty-first. So these are the rankings given by Hurun Organization of China. Right? Look at the next one. Bal Chandra Nemade. Bal Chandra Nemade won the Bharatiya Gnan Peet Award. This Gnan Peet Award is the highest literary award in the country. Who is the founder of Nanpit? Founder of Nanpit is Sahu Shanti Prasad Jain. Nanpit was started in the year 1944 on February 18th. 1944 February 18th, this Nanpit was started basically to look into the cultural heritage to ensure publications. Which were written on Talpatra Granthas in Sanskrit, Prakrit, Pali, and other languages. Indian cultural heritage is on Talpatra Granthas, and most of these Talpatra Granthas were in the languages Prakrit, Sanskrit, and Pali. And these Talpatra Granthas are to be brought into the manuscripts. These manuscripts are to be published in booklet forms. These manuscripts. Are to be published as books and to bring out the cultural heritage of the country. The main purpose of this grand peet was to bring out cultural heritage of the country. And for that purpose, Shahu Shanti Prasad Jain started this organization in the year 1944, and this award was instituted in the year 1965. 1965, this award was first. Instituted and the first recipient was Malayali writer Shankar Kurup. First award winner, Malayali writer Shankar Kurup, and this year Balchandra Nemade got the award and the prize money is now rupees eleven lakhs. Please remember, and he is the fourth Marathi writer to get the award, and the award constitutes eleven lakh rupees in cash and bronze statue of Saraswati, and. Is citation. So this is about Grand Peter Watt and other things you can read into this. And look at the last one, Rockefeller Foundation. Where is this Rockefeller location headquarters? Headquarters of this Rockefeller Foundation is in New York. In the year 1913, Rockefeller family started this foundation. The main purpose of this foundation is. Well-being of the humanity. Well-being of the humanity is the main purpose. Recently, they completed hundred years of its existence. In commemoration of hundred years of its existence, they are selecting hundred cities across the world. They are selecting hundred cities across the world, and India, they selected three cities. In India, they selected three cities. They are Chennai, Bengaluru, and Surat. That means they want to improve these cities. So Rockefeller Foundation selected three cities in India: Bengaluru, Chennai, and Surat. This is part of the development of hundred cities. Right. So with this, we are concluding today's uh, lecture. Please join for question and answer sessions of this week. 
So this week covers broadly from February 2nd to February 8th main issues of current affairs. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Please join for our question and answer sessions in two parts. And thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you.